She is a novelist with many bestsellers to her name. A scriptwriter who has worked with many renowned directors. Yet her own story is even more fascinating than the ones she creates. Why do you think your works are so attractive to all these great directors? You should ask them. <laughs> so I don't consider myself as a, 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 a film person. But it earns bread for you. But uh, writing novel is something. It's like a, it's like a, my hobby. Okay. But it's it's more like a, my religious life. If I don't do it, I I can't find a peace of mind. Yang Guoling has lived the lives of a dancer. A war correspondent and a wife to a diplomat, but above all, she is a storyteller. When you grew up, what did you want to be? At the time, I really, really loved the dancing. Then, you know, the my father's genes kick in. I discovered that there is a writer dormanting in my in me, and who always wanted to talk more than dance can do. Back to your own life. What is the life like as a, you know, as a writer, as successful as you are? I love that life as a gypsy, traveling all all the time,、yeah. and、uh, you cannot take anything for granted. It's a it's a wonderful life. I have nothing to complain. We meet this fascinating woman and her fascinating stories. Yang Guoling, the icon. It was a movie hat trick for author Yan Geling when, in 2014, *Coming Home* hit theaters. Based on a novel and directed by Zhang Yimou, the film broke box office records for an art house film and took Best Chinese Language Film at the Hong Kong Film Awards. This followed a collaboration with Zhang three years earlier on *Flowers of War*. Also adapted from her novel set during the Nanjing Massacre, it took Best Picture at the Hua Biao Awards, the highest film honor awarded by the Chinese government. And both of these films followed a biopic about the Peking opera master Mei Lanfeng, which took Best Film at the Golden Rooster Awards in 2008. In that instance, she was the scriptwriter, teaming up with another renowned Chinese director, Chen Kaige. Those pictures are actually some、uh, movie scenes from *Coming Back*,、mm. from *Elan Fang*, from *The Flowers of War*. These are actually the three films, award-winning films, well, based on your er- original novels.、Uh, actually, uh, only two. Only two.、Fang. Not *Elan Fang*. No. Okay,、mm. but、mm. still, I mean, it's it's your works. Why do you think your works are so attractive to all these great directors? You should ask them. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us your impression. <laughs> oh well, I think um, uh, I'm a, a basically storyteller.、Mm. I don't uh, uh, really、um, uh, aspire to be some kind of esoteric、mm. uh, writer, but、uh, I think、uh, I like to depict、uh, the the long history of uh, Chinese. Uh, Uh, people and the Chinese,、uh, um, I think the intellectuals' life,、mm. and yeah. Well, coming back that、mm. movie,、mm-hmm. it's based on your novel. This one, right? Criminal Lu Yanshi. Lu Yanshi. Yeah. Well, I, I've read this novel.、Uh, basically,、uh, director Zhang Yimo, he just chose a very small part of the whole story、mm. of this book.、Uh, Do you regret、uh, he's choosing only a small part of that? Oh well, this is a very big novel. It is、uh, that contain. Yeah, you know, I think it 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 has、uh, um, four forty thousand words. Forty thousand. Maybe four hundred. Four hundred thousand. Four hundred thousand Chinese characters.、Mm. So it's hard for uh, for uh, a director to、uh, put all the. Parts into a、uh, one movie, which only、That's、lasts one、right. hundred、uh, minutes. That's right. And uh, also, um, the he was、uh, the most uh, touched uh, by the last part. This criminal was uh, released and uh, reinstated, um, and uh, uh, coming home.、Mm. And uh, he was the most uh, uh, 
uh, moved by this part. Mm. Coming Home was adapted from the last 30 pages of Yan's award-winning novel, The Criminal Lu Yan Shi. It tracks the life of an ex-criminal desperate to return to his family. It's a drama of guilt, love and reconciliation set during the aftermath of the Cultural Revolution. During his long incarceration, Lu realized he was in love with his wife. But by the time of his release, she is afflicted with amnesia and she does not recognize the man for whom she has yearned. This story of personal trauma moves audiences to tears and won high acclaim at the Cannes Film Festival where it premiered in the off-competition screening segment. To you, in this novel, is it more of the desperation of love or more desperation of those years, the specific periods of Chinese history? Um, I think this novel is a saga, right? It, it is an epic novel, right, w w which we call epic. So it's a, it's a, a man's life, one man's life, reflecting uh, the country's, uh, uh, the whole country, whole nation's mm. uh, uh, fate, right? That's right. So, the, uh, so uh, I think um, the the reason why I uh, uh, started to write this novel is because my my grandfather, uh, who uh, had the similar uh, uh, fate mm. or uh, um, personal experience. Also, a PhD degree holder mm. from yes. America. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, but he committed suicide. He didn't survive the misfortune. Um, so I wanted to write this uh, to commemorate mm. this grandfather of mine. And I, uh, as I get older, I realized uh, how much I myself can identify with this 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 man. Mm. Um, so I think that was a uh, uh, kind of a. Uh, 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 route of uh, uh, self-discovery. Mm. Um. Well, Tian Yu or the sky bath. Mm -hmm. And and coming back or criminal uh, Lu Yan Shi, both stories are set in those years. Is that the period of Chinese history special interest to you? Yeah, you know um, when Cultural Revolution started, uh, I was seven. So you know, that's the you know the from that age on. Uh, it, it, it the children at that and, and or youth at that time is most uh, 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 interested in uh, the, the people's experiences and he the I really saw and uh, and experienced the human nature, human nature, how they play on uh, this ten, on this stage of ten years of uh, chaos. So I was uh, so impressed by so many people's different sufferings and uh, and uh, and uh, um, a fate, mm. I would say, and uh, and also some people you you see it you see them as uh, good people, and in the, you know just in the, overnight they could become a traitor. They could, could become uh, uh, somebody who are suffered from these traitors. So, you know, just uh, it's it's amazing that you you can examine examine uh, the, the, the the human nature during the ten years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think uh, and the, that ten years uh, really gave me so many to write. Well, this is not the first time that you worked with uh, director Zhang Yimou. Huh? And uh, the flowers of war. Mm -hmm. That was an early uh, production. Yes. How about that one? <laughs> that that one. more difficult one. <laughs> yeah, that one. I uh, I uh, was one of uh, the two screenplay writers. Um, that one was uh, yeah. To to work with directors, uh, it's always very difficult because you uh, you try to convince him. He tried to you know to do the Different otherwise. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's um, uh, 
you know, in the end, I, the, the, the only thing I can do is to, 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 to just give up what I... <laughs> in the end, I know this is a director's work, so you, if you don't, uh, the right, you don't write the way he wants, he will change it anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> so why it's called Zhang Yimou's film, yeah? not, not your film, right? Yeah. yeah. And then Kim was on fire. The last Chinese troops cleared our path back to our church. Although Flowers of War saw some disagreements between her and the director, the film went on to win the praises of critics and audiences alike. Yan's novel of the same name is based on the true story of 13 prostitutes saving a group of girls by going to a deadly party instead of them. The incident was recorded in the diary of American missionary Minnie Votrin, who remained in Nanjing in 1937 as Japanese soldiers brutalized the city. You've worked all with all these renowned directors starting in early years with An Li, mm -hmm. with the film um, Xiao Yu, right. and then later on with director Zhang Yimou, and then with Chen Kai Ge, and many more might be now queuing up to work with you <laughs> in, the, in the future. So what does it feel to be uh, able to work with all these renowned directors? I mean, how different are they? Oh, well, <laughs> well uh, I didn't really work with An Li. Uh, he bought, he the, bought your, yeah, your the, novel. Yeah, yeah. then I, uh, yeah, I wrote the script okay. and uh, only for the first draft. And we only talked on the phone, exchanging ideas. And uh, so later on, we, we met uh, and uh, he, uh, we talked about this project. And uh, he said, uh, well, you know, then at the time I got to the project uh, uh, of the that, sense, uh, sensibility. Yeah, sense and sensibility. Mm. So, so what do you think? What would you cho choose? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and yeah. then he, uh, he switched to be uh, the producer uh, yeah. instead of uh, a director. Yeah. yeah. So. What about the other directors like Zhang Yimou and Chen Kai Ge? Both are quite successful directors in China. Uh, they are d very different. Uh, 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 Kai Ge is more uh, intellectual. You know, he uh, he always asks himself and me, "What do we want to say? Message. What message do we want to send?" He's philosophical. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He's, uh, he's always much. Uh, uh, he thinks more. Um, something beyond, something deeper, you know. Mm. Um, and he always asks this question, oh, well, maybe this is about this, or mm. about that, you know. And he doesn't really just, uh, he's, not, he's not going to satisfy the, just by the, you know, with the story itself. So he always wants to, uh, to go further. Mm. Um, the uh, hidden message. Yeah, yeah but uh, um, yeah, uh, Zhang Yimou also, yeah, th oh, this story is about this and also, but to, he, uh, to him, uh, the, uh, the characters and the stories and th those are more important. And so he mm. wanted to bring out a, a really um, unique, uh, you know, the, the, the story and the characters. I think, uh, you know, uh, I, I like the, uh, uh, Coming Home pretty much. Mm. I think it's, uh, it's a good adaptation, you know, within this, uh, you know. The framework yes, of the original yeah. novel. Yeah, yeah. Is now script writing taking up much of your time now? Because you initially are a writer. <laughs> yeah, many, many uh, directors and uh, filmmakers want me to write more. But I don't think I should because uh, I'm basically a novelist. And I uh, can make uh, original novels much better. And I think I have uh, more talent for languages than mm. uh, making uh, scripts. In other words, you have to make compromises as a script writer. Well, as a novelist, you're on your own. Right. Yeah. So I like to have this freedom, in infinite freedom, to create my own uh, uh, world. That's just side job. Right. No. <laughs> you know what? I think because of writing scripts and all these people really, uh, all these uh, works really gave me. Great income, right? Oh yeah. So I consider that uh, as my day job. You know, sometimes you don't have to love your day job, but mm. you have to do it. Mm. Uh, but uh, writing novel uh, is something. It's like uh, it's like uh, my 
hobby or something I I do it to, for my uh, 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 well-being. You know, my mental well-being. Okay. But it's it's more like uh, my religious life. Something or, you enjoy doing. Yes. Yes. And uh, if I don't do it, I I can't find a peace of mind. Well, with the script writing, you probably don't enjoy that much doing it because you have to make compromises. Yes. But it earns bread for you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> do we have to put it in such a straight way and a frank way? You know? We don't know. But the thing is, uh, all the script writing, mm -hmm. all these movies, and the experience of working with all these big directors in China makes you more famous. It brings fame to you. In turn, it attracts more uh, Read. readers actually mm -hmm. to buy more of your books. How do you see this cycle? Well, you know, as a person, I really feel clumsy uh, of uh, doing uh, PR work for myself. Okay, to do the publicities and uh, you know, so you know, they say it's it, it, it's it's not uh, you, you can't uh, you can't. Uh, Avoid it, so you have to do it. But movies are good publicity. Good PR. Yeah, yeah. Saves your saves your time. Yeah, either it does well <laughs> or does it doesn't. It always brings good yeah. publicity so for my novels. I I want to convert some of uh, uh, the audience in the movie theater who watch my mo the, the the movies based on my novels mm. to my readership. Mm. This is what I really want to do, you know. But I never do anything uh, on purpose. Uh, yeah. yeah, on purpose. I just let you know. I'm Natural the, happening. Yeah. It's happening. Yeah. Natural yeah. development. Yes. Your father was also a writer himself. You right. Yeah. So he taught you how to write. Oh no. <laughs> I was a dancer. You were a dancer, military dancer, right. actually. Yeah, military. Uh, you know, th those uh, years, the uh, military um, recruit recruit the the most, art troops. Yeah, yeah. The, the most talented children. Mm. So they trained them. So they they trained me to be uh, to be a dancer. But I wasn't good good one. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you at the time? Uh, Eleven or twelve. Eleven, twelve. Yeah. And then you were recruited by the military to be a military dancer. Right. You know, but back then we had Hong Se Niang Zi Jun. You know, red uh, uh, red detachment of women. You're right. Yeah. It's now a ballet uh, ballet show. It's it's a great show now. Right, and also white haired girl. Right. Oh yeah. 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 So the, those are the major two ballets, the uh, uh, dramas we danced. Did you play any main characters at no. the time? <laughs> no. One of I one of the troops. One of right, the... right, right. Yeah. Somehow it helped you. Get away from all these turmoils outside in the society, right? Right. It was right. a protection. Right, and because I think, um, you know, uh, uh, compared with Red Guards who are not army, but they are, they they they, are, they, they always uh, raise uh, some kind of violence and uh, chaos, mm -hmm. right? And uh, the army is the, some, the force that brings uh, order. That's the backbone the, the, of yeah. the society at the right, time. Right, right. And so, so I I admire them. I uh, I really want to become one of them, so I tried my best to get into the army. So that was your own choice. Right. Yeah, I was very very um, admired by other children. You know, when I mm, walked down the street in uniform with uh, uh, insignias mm, and uh, mm. all the children, are you real? <laughs> are you real or not? You know, like mm. a, 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 like a soldier, a doll soldier. You know. So I uh, really enjoyed my. Uh, uh, Military years. years. What did you want to be at the time? Did you think of that? You know, when you grew up, or what did you want to be? At the time, I really, really loved the dancing. But I, but my idea was uh, I wanted to dance, dance solo. White hat girl. Solo. One day, <laughs> yeah. one so, day you were going to play that role, <laughs> right, right? right? Yeah. So I was a very single track minded person. Mm. And um, then, you know, the my father's genes kick in. In 1979, when war broke out between China and Vietnam, Yan heard there was a shortage of journalists on the front line, and she volunteered to be a war correspondent. Her main job was to interview wounded soldiers. Here, real-life dramas of heroism, suffering, and death were daily laid out before her. Yan wrote a lot of poems and reportage, and from then on, took to the pen rather than her point shoes. 
For a woman who spent so many happy childhood hours in her father's library, this turn of events was perhaps inevitable. What did that experience leave you now in your life? You know, abruptly, I changed my profession. I um, abandoned the dancing career just like that. <laughs> no more white hair girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I found, I discovered there is a writer dominating in, my, in me and who always wanted to talk more than dance can do. Mm. Yan rose to fame for writing the screenplay Heartstring, which was later made into a film. She then wrote some award-winning novels. In 1988, Yan was one of just a few artists invited by the US Embassy to visit as part of an exchange program. She seized the opportunity and embarked on a course of further education in the US. In a little over a year and a half, she went from barely knowing her ABCs to attaining a TOEFL score sufficient to get into graduate school. She enrolled at the Columbia College of Art in 1989 and got systematic training as a writer, requiring her to read long lists of novels and write hundreds of pages of papers. But it was all worth it. You got your fame actually as a professional writer, novelist, fairly young. Uh, by the age of 30, you've already finished like 11, 12 novels, three and four lands, and winning all these national prizes. How did you feel at the time to be so young yet to be so successful? Oh, uh, well, I think, I think uh, then, then, then going to the U.S. to get, uh, get uh, education, uh, further education was... When was uh, that? Um, in 1989. 89. Yes, mm -hmm. I went to the U.S. to get my uh, graduate student, uh, graduate degree. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, um, so I think that uh, really was my. Uh, um, you know, I think I need s further education. I need uh, um, a new uh, materials for my writing. So then, from that time, I started to write Chinese immigrants' life, like Fu Sang and a bunch of uh, uh, novels and stories. So at the time, you were very successful already, but at the same time, you felt you were struggling a little bit with where to go next mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. after all the successes previously. Yeah, because I think if to be early, uh, to be uh, chosen. Uh, to be a, a professional writer in that early age isn't good for me because I stopped living as a normal p person. Okay. Yeah, like I don't do any, everybody, you know, it's like uh, uh, when I went to U.S., for example, I, I went to the restaurant to work as a waitress. I went to a, a, a rich people's house to be a, a, a nanny, right? So all these people, I, I, I really didn't think I was collecting materials for my uh, uh, future writings. Uh -huh. I was earning bread. I was earning a living. So that was a real life. So then that made me understand the, the, the new immigrants, how they feel, you know, about the alienation, displacement, all this, right? So all the uh, later, uh, the, the, the stories like uh, uh, Xiao Yu was about uh, this kind of uh, experience I had. Well, to be able to communicate in English is one thing, mm -hmm. and you did it well. But to be able to write in English is totally another thing. Right. You also did it. Yes. You, you wrote it, uh, 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 the novel. banquet, a uh, novel, yes. the banquet bug. bug. Yes. Totally in English. Mm -hmm. how, how, how did you manage to do that? <laughs> I mean, starting from someone who is basically English illiterate, and then after a few years of training, you started to write in English, and you, it <laughs> won you an award at the time in America. How did you manage to do that? Uh, well, I think uh, uh, in, in school, you know, our writing training, uh, our writing all done in English, so you cannot do it in Chinese. I was the only uh, foreign student in that department for 100 some years, right? So I, I had to write in English. He, although the, the writing was terrible in the beginning, right? And further, uh, 
uh, in the last two years, maybe I did better. Mm -hmm. But it was I. My reading was the English, and I tr I tried very hard to to get the feel of uh, of English writing because my English uh, at the time I wrote uh, uh, the novel the banquet book was only uh, 18 years old, so I was uh, 18 years old uh, English writer. <laughs> so I I w told myself uh, so if I couldn't make it published, uh, fine. I tried, right? Mm. It, it's fun always to try, you know. So, but uh, the publisher really loved it, mm. and the, my editor in uh, 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 Hyperion, um, my uh, the the publishing house, which is uh, attached to uh, Disney, uh, and said, uh, you know, we find we found another Con uh, Joseph Conrad. <laughs> you know, right? The jo Joseph Conrad d didn't write English until, uh, until, or uh, didn't learn English until he was 27. So, I was very, very happy about w with myself. And after that, I said, okay. So I proved that I could write in English. That's it. I come back to write writing Chinese. Over the years, Yan has published dozens of full-length or short novels many of which have won major awards on the mainland or in Taiwan. Along with the criminal Lu Yan Shi, Little Aunt Crane is among her most famous. Both have won the Chinese Association for Fiction's top prizes for a full-length novel. Now, back to your own life. What is the life like as a, you know, as a writer, as successful as you are? Mm, well, my life is very simple and boring. <laughs> yes, every day I just started the same way. I have uh, two cups of coffee and uh, go back, uh, go 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 back to my writing. And uh, every day I work a little bit, like uh, three or four hours on my novels, and, and uh, then I read and rock, watch movies and exercise. You didn't mention your husband. You didn't mention your daughter, right? <laughs> I'm no, sure. I'm, I'm sure they play a huge part in your life. She also found her love in the States, a U.S. diplomat named Lawrence A. Walker, who, barred from dating someone from a communist country, gave up his job to be with her. They married in 1992, after which she returned to the diplomatic corps. Since then, her travels around the world as a diplomat's wife have given her access to even more stories. Meanwhile, with his good command of Chinese, Walker has translated some of Yan's works into English, including The Landlady and White Snake. He is now working on the criminal Lu Yan Shi. And now you, 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 with that job, with your husband as a professional diplomat, you get to travel around the world. That in turn is also helping you as a writer. Yeah, right? I, I love that life as a gypsy traveling all all the time yeah. and um, you cannot take anything for granted so but then then you are like a child you know keep your uh, curiosity going all mm. the time you know so it's, it's a wonderful life yeah i have nothing to complain absolutely mm -hmm. but uh, can you at least tell us what exactly is the next project you're now working on um i'm working on a story about uh, uh, gymnastics mm. This time gymnastics. Mm -hmm. Where did you get that inspiration? You didn't. You I re read stories. All oh, right. <laughs> and that's the only thing, the only clue you could give us now. Yes. <laughs> All right. Look forward to reading that new novel. Thank and thank you. you once again for coming to the Icon. Thank you okay. for stopping by. Thank okay. You. Thank you. You think Chinese literature or Chinese writers are now attracting more attention? Of course much more attention than 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Can writers be trained? First, you have to be a writer. Well, first, you have to have the writer's material. The right? genius. Right, the you genius have sense. to have the talent. You, you, if you are just, uh, you, you, you don't like writing, writing or you don't have a, what, the sense of what to write and, 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 and to, you, you, you're not sensitive to the language, mm. then you cannot be trained.